just hang tight. <laughs> and thanks for being here. Can get. Yeah, it's working. You got it. Hi, you guys. All right. We are live on YouTube. It's very exciting. Um, we're going to give everyone another five minutes to kind of find us in their respective worlds, either via Zoom or YouTube, because we just hit that YouTube live button. So enjoy the slideshow for the next few minutes, and I'll be right back. Oh, hi, 
are you guys? Welcome sure. to the first, first Friday this February. Uh, my name is Monica Miller. I'm the director, but I'm not alone. I'm here tonight with uh, Rachel Kirk, board member, Diane, Jenny, Dale, Mary, Cindy, Elizabeth, hi you guys, and more, I assume will be joining us as they navigate the new, uh, is it new? The Zoom world, YouTube world. So welcome and thank you for being here. We're also here with Sarah Haven, who is helping to facilitate the Zoom experience. So if you have any questions, feel free to pop it in the chat if you are a participating artist in the show and here via Zoom. If you are watching us via YouTube, you can share your experience in the chat with Renee Adams, who is also here. And of course, I have our VJ, Justin Beckman, behind uh, the, the screen, so to speak, right now, helping to facilitate our audio and, and video needs and experience tonight. Um, if you don't mind muting your mic, that would be great. Otherwise, we'll get feedback, and we know how much artists love um, unwanted feedback. Is there a sound effect for that? <laughs> I'll get my own sound effects tonight. No big deal. Um, tonight, we are joined by a, a number of the 87 artists that are represented in our members' show this month here gallery one ellensburg washington land of the confederated tribes and bands of the yakima nation our members come from everywhere near and far we have members in new york oregon spokane seattle um, and if you live somewhere else that i didn't mention just drop it in the chat we'd love to see where you're from and also, if you're not familiar with the territory that you occupy, I invite you to visit native-land.ca to explore and learn more. This map, as does our members exhibit, shows beautifully how interconnected we are. Tonight, I wanna to do three things. I wanna give you a heads up on some of the upcoming awesomeness that is happening at the gallery. I want to celebrate you, our artist members, and I want to honor our former director, Carol Hassan, whose work is featured in the main gallery. Can you guys hear me? Is this, is this on? Yes? Wrong one? Is this one? Okay. Technology. I'm still figuring it out. Um, <laughs> You should know, first of all, that we are open. Yay! We are open for you to see all of this artwork that we are about to talk about and celebrate in person. And we're following all of the protocols. We're looking forward to hosting you in person when it is safe, hosting events in person. You can still come in and visit the show when it is safe to do so. In the meantime, I want to invite you to participate in a few upcoming virtual events. First, I want to invite you to join us as members, as you are. This is the membership exhibit, after all. To join us on February 20th here on YouTube for our first ever, maybe our last ever, not sure. I think we'll see about that. Um, variety show, virtual variety show in celebration of the talent of all of our members. Alex Ayer and I will facilitate a fun evening of performances by our board and staff with lots of special guests, including Mel Peterson, Fabiola Sara, Mark Pickerel, Chuck Boom, and maybe Maybe something with this bunny. Not a bunny. <laughs> Maybe something with this penguin. So now you know how much fun it's going to be. <laughs> ah, 
Okay. Does this fit? Um, we have a handful of party packs and member pins for you who can come in and renew in person. So stop by, see the show, get your swag. And um, no, I won't be wearing this hat all night. Should I? That's a no. Okay. So join us for that February 20th. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, if you're so inclined and inspired tonight, you can drop off a handmade Valentine's card here at Gallery One, and we will exchange it with another community member's card that you will get in the mail by Valentine's Day because we love our post office. Um, Becky Parmenter has made some art to go kits. I don't know if you've heard of our art to go kits, but you can purchase all of the materials and instructions to make your own Valentine if you don't have the supplies you need. And um, gosh, I forgot what these are called, but, but you make the Valentine by poking holes in it, if you can see the light through there. And I don't know about you guys, but I've never wanted to get pricked so much. Finally, I invite you to take a class with us, uh, such as the draw a hug class, which don't we all need one of with Ray Mack on uh, Valentine's Day or sign your kiddo up for one of our art after school classes. Any work made in any of our online classes, either art after school or the draw a hug or art to go, kits that we've had, um, or if you've taken a class somewhere else online, is eligible for exhibit in March for our I Made This Online exhibit. So create to your heart's content, take one of our classes, take someone else's classes, but just keep making work and we'd love to show it here in person at the gallery next month. As I mentioned, we are open, but we're going to share a little preview of the members show and work with you tonight. By we, I mean Justin is going to do that. Renee has taken some awesome shots of the work that she has so beautifully hung and exhibited in our hallway gallery, our Picasso gallery, our Eveleth Green gallery. So I'd like to share with you just some of those shots, some of the work that represents the work that you have made to share with us. I mean, let's be honest, it's a bittersweet beginning to 2021. It's uh, obviously bitter because of the drastic changes and impacts that the pandemic has had on our individual and also our collective lives. But sweet because of the resiliency that we have found in our togetherness. The work in the members exhibit spans the breadth of the human experience. Exhibited on these walls, you will, um, <laughs> you'll find all the feels, you'll feel all the feels. But more importantly, you will see the names of your friends, maybe your family, maybe your art buddies, but collectively the names of your community. We have in the show 87, 87 works representing our almost 700 memberships. We have professional artists, we have young artists, we have hobby artists, we have pandemic artists, <laughs> all here exhibiting together. Our members, come from Kennewick, Yakima, Spokane, Seattle, Thorpe, Montana, Idaho. Again, I mentioned, if I leave you out, just plop it in there, YouTube or Zoom. 
we are connected by both our art and our hearts. I want to thank you for sharing both of them, your art and your heart with us. Carol Hassan whose work occupies the walls in our main and mezzanine galleries made a lifetime of making space for others on the walls of the galleries that she was either the director of or curated exhibits for. She made space at the table if somebody wanted a seat. And most importantly, she made space in her heart. For me, she was a lifeline as a newcomer. <laughs> As a newcomer to Ellensburg, she was a lifeline. She invited me into Gallery One, and eventually she literally gave me her seat at her desk. And since her passing, I have heard countless stories from other artists, staff members, board members, and dear friends of how she did the same for them. I was honored to know her, to love her, and to be loved by her. I'm so grateful that Bob Fisher, Carol's husband, um, has joined us tonight to share a few words about Carol, who we are honoring in decades of art. Good evening. This is Bob Fisher, and Monica has asked me to talk a little bit about Carol and about Carol's show that's opening tonight at Gallery One. Um, the show started about two years ago when Carol and Monica started talking about doing a show and Carol then made three proposals and this is the proposal that the gallery decided to, to do. The hope was that Carol would be able to see this show because it was originally scheduled for last fall but that's when she got sick. Um, and to have it in February was to coincide with the members exhibit because Carol had been, been very instrumental in bringing artists and members back to Gallery One. Unfortunately, she did not live to see this. So when we talk about Carol, we talk about two people. We talk about Carol, the gallery director, and Carol, the artist. And even though they're connected, they're not the same person. Uh, they rely on two different skill sets. And Carol, the gallery director's origins are as a legal secretary in Salem, Oregon in the early 1960s. Uh, she was very good at what she did and very proficient and very pragmatic about how she handled things and she was greatly appreciated by the lawyers that she worked with. When uh, she and her first husband John moved back to Kentucky for him to go to school, she, Carol worked as a legal secretary there and researcher and grew very disenchanted with the legal system in that state. She quit and started taking art classes at the local college and fell in love with that. But as a legal secretary, her role later as a gallery director came in very handy. She initiated artist contracts where there hadn't been any. She initiated um, record keeping and other things associated with gallery business that she did not inherit from someone else before her. 
So in many ways at Larson Gallery, she's had a completely clean slate to be able to work with and to be able to bring a, an organization that was barely surviving back up and to become one of the, the leading venues in central Washington. That ability likewise has to do with part of her training as an artist and that is that she started taking weaving classes when she was at Oregon State University and was very good at it. Very sequential, you map things out, you thread the loom to, to create the pattern that you've mapped out and you weave the pattern and you take the thing off. Everything relies on a neat sequence. And that ability to organize sort of in a holistic fashion to see the end product while you're doing the beginning part is uh, something that she could do very, very well. She could see the big picture and identify the steps that needed to be taken to get to that. So when she was gallery director at both Larson and then later at Gallery One, she took what were difficult circumstances for anybody to inherit or to, to pick up and to make very successful, successful organizations out of both of them. That ability included being a people person, which she was, she enjoyed people, uh, she was very generous with people, and she liked how they did things. So she worked with them, she made them part of the process, and like different threads going through the loom to create a pattern, the people that she worked with were able to come together to create a whole organization, like a piece of cloth. Carol's life as an artist is in many ways just the opposite of that. She never grew up taking art in school. She was never encouraged by her parents to, to do art, although she was encouraged to be um, creative in how she approached chores and, and things. But she grew up very poor and um, recognized that when you have something, you don't get rid of it simply because it's not valuable now. And so she was able as even a young artist to be able to see that the skills that she had, which might not have been developed as well as they could have, or like with other people that developed those skills much earlier, she was able to take those skills and to do something with them. She, she was told that she had a phenomenal sense of design, and I agree with that. She also had a very amazing sense of color, especially around the color blue. She handled blues in a way that I've never seen anybody else handle blues. And as an artist, she would approach things very spontaneously, not sequentially, not logically. She would start with a canvas and smear some color on, and then something would start to coalesce, and she would start bringing an image out and that image would in some way connect to some memory that she had from a trip she took as a kid or a trip that she took or some of the uh, some of the things that happened with her kids and things like that. So they were never literal transcriptions of things that occurred. They were emotional responses to things that had happened. And that became the grist for her. She was able to take those memories, those feelings, and to be able to evoke them onto a canvas with color and with form in a way that touched other people. She said, has said in her uh, resume that she didn't want to give the viewer the answers to what her pictures were. She wanted to invite the viewer to find common memories that they had with what was being uh, exhibited on the canvas. And so in that respect, her, her titles are somewhat ambiguous. Um, they, her work never started with the tile, titles first. They always came afterwards. Sometimes they happened long after. 
the work was finished because what they evoked wasn't necessarily readily apparent. So her abilities as an artist were in many ways just the opposite of her abilities as a gallery director. And in, in that respect, I think she was probably one of the most mentally integrated people where the analytic half of the brain and the emotional half, artistic half of the brain are work together. Because if she in a painting could or needed to be uh, more pragmatic or more analytical about what, what she needed to do, she could. Or if she was as a gallery director, getting to the, the goal in a more standard fashion wasn't working, she could creatively go 90 degrees to the left and come out at the same place with a much better result. So in many respects, Carol was a, a whole person in more ways than I think many people are. And so um, her abilities are multi, multifaceted and are part of who she was. And the artwork that she created is part of that process of knowing what she can do and how to get to it and knowing what she doesn't know how to do and be able to get somewhere that's more interesting. I miss her and I hope that you enjoy the show as much as I have. Thank you. How to reimagine an event. And I gotta say, this is also, this is not, not part of my script. Um, she liked to party, you know, like she was really, she was a fun person. She, I think that whatever she did, if it wasn't fun, maybe it wasn't worth it. And I appreciated that about her um, in addition to her generosity and her, her candor. She did a lot for Gallery One as an organization. She did a lot for us as individuals. Um, and Julie Prather, board member and also friend of Carol's has offered to say a few things about her impact on, um, on, on Gallery One. So I think that Sarah should be able to unmute you, Julie, and if you're not unmuted yourself, you should be able to say something. Justin. Can you hear? Can oh. you hear? Yes. Okay. So Carol was a good friend for many years. I met her when she was in graduate school here at Central. And uh, she, that was in the early 1980s. And we had remained friends ever since. And, and I was really impressed when she went down to the Larson Gallery and took this little gallery that not many people knew about it and turned it into this happening place that people wanted to see the openings and go to the shows and and uh, yeah it became the place that you wanted to be in Yakima and so I was impressed with that and then she decided to retire because she wanted to devote herself to her art and she and Bob had brought bought property here in Ellensburg and so they were in the midst of um, building this, uh, designing and building their, their dream home with this um, amazing gallery that anybody would die for. And so that was great. So they're up here building this house. And at this point, gallery one kind of went through a, a rough spot. And during this rough spot, we actually were um, without a director for a, almost a year. So, um, so with Carol up here, it was like, oh my gosh, we need Carol, you know? Yes, she's retired. Yes, she wants to do her artwork, but we need her. And so we approached her about doing this and it's like, you can do it just for a short period of time and uh, get us back on our feet and then you can go do your art. So uh, fortunately she agreed. So that was 
perfect. So she stayed, um, you know, we said a short time, but she, she stayed for five years, which was great, which was even more great as she was working with Monica that whole time. And, you know, showing Monica the ropes and having her know all the connections and things like that. So that was perfect. But it was one thing about Carol that I think was similar in her being a director and being an artist was the fact that um, she was never seemed never satisfied with the status quo in her artwork or being a director. As a director, she she always thought about what she could do, and then. It made me think after she died, what is the difference between a good director and um, just an, you know, an excellent director? So I thought about it and I thought, well, a good director kind of keeps the organization going like a well-oiled machine. And she, she did that. She got us back and running. She, everything was feeling good. And we probably would have been satisfied there. But then, no, she... She's never quite satisfied. So she started all these new pro programs and events. And so she was very creative in her thinking and what she could do next for the gallery and to how to make it last, you know, forever. So, and the endowment was definitely one of those things that is gonna help. And, uh, but yeah, so I, I was very impressed. And then in her artwork, I found her artwork, she was always pushing to do something different and to try new things and to to push herself in that respect too so in those ways i see a similarity between uh but it's basically who she was and so um and it showed up in being a director and it showed up in her artwork and so uh as i close i just wanted to point out that i have a beautiful carol hassan work up there above my head that you can enjoy so thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Bob, uh, for sharing such beautiful sentiments about Carol, the person and the artist. And isn't that true? Behind every artwork is a person. <sighs> so what does it mean to be an artist? Uh, what does it mean to be an artist member at Gallery One, um, it means that there will always be a space for you on the walls or in the gallery, um, in all of your your units. <laughs> um, so I want to thank you all for having the heart to show it for having the heart to be it. And I hope to see you at the gallery. We're gonna end the live stream now, but I also welcome um, the participating artists in the show to stay on for a little while so we can connect via the Zoom room. And for those of you tuning in from uh, YouTube land, thank you for joining us. Uh, the internet, I hope, is just a way to connect you to the place and the people that make Gallery One so special. And